I bet you, you, you saw that title and you were like, oh my gosh, she's going to give us like step one, step two, step three. And she's going to outline this wonderful blueprint. And I'm going to follow that and get to the million dollars. Ah, you might as well click off now because that's not exactly how this is going to go. This is Kristen Ostrander, host of the Amazon Files podcast brought to you by Mommy Income. I am so glad that you're here and listening today. I am so excited today because this is the week of Mommy Income's birthday. Yes, Mommy Income is officially turning seven. And I am just thrilled over that. I want to be able to kind of reflect a little bit on the past seven years of the Mommy Income journey for all of you who have not been with us a long time, or maybe you have been with us since the very first show. I just want to reflect a little bit on kind of the journey, how this got started, how Mommy Income got started, how the Amazon Files podcast ended up getting started. But most importantly, um, I want to talk about what it really takes to build a million dollar business and the real truth about that, because there's a lot of information out there. And if you even just type in YouTube, like right now, like how to build an online business or, you know, how to get started or how to make a million dollars or anything like that. Like there's all kinds of everything. As a matter of fact, I did this search myself and found that there was like hundreds of thousands of results, lots of work at home opportunities, lots of, hey, make a million dollars with YouTube, make a million dollars with this, Amazon, eBay, crypto, currencies, like all these different ways, like investing, real estate, all this stuff. But when you, when it you know, kind of boils down to, um, you know, when the rubber actually meets the road and you, instead of looking at that, I suggest instead that you search for people that have already made a million dollars and ask them how to do it. Ask them what they're doing and how they have become successful. And then find a path that's important to you to follow after that. Because after all this time, I've been in business for 18 years. I started on eBay in 2003, um, very much a side-side hustle, still a business, but very side-side hustle when I had time, when I could do it as a stay-at-home mom um, in 2003, and then eventually added Amazon in 2008 and been on Amazon ever since. I still have an eBay store. It's just not a primary source of income. It has, it's more of one of my streams of income that I have. And so when I talk about these different things and, and how I got, you know, from A to Z and all that kind of stuff, people are like, wow, you know, it, it, there's all these different characteristics and different things do over time. It's not some step-by-step -step formula that you can follow that you can just give somebody a blueprint. Um, because everybody's journey is going to be different and everybody's journey into whatever they consider as success is going to be different as well. But what I've learned is that there's definitely some common threads among people who have reached a certain level. And it's even awkward for me to say these things because I don't even consider these levels as my own. Although the numbers say that they are, there's, it, it's a different, different feeling, I guess. So I'm learning to own this position, I guess. But the reality is that there are definitely some specific key factors. And what I feel like got me from the side hustle, stay at home mom with like 20 bucks to spend on inventory, all the way to running a team of people who we have over a million dollars a year in revenue. And we work with many people to make this happen. And how do you go from the $20 stay-at-home mom trying to make ends meet to running not one, but two very successful businesses. Um, <laughs> I laugh because it's like, well, it wasn't a, it's not, you're not going to hear this, uh, make a million dollars in six months, you know, kind of thing here. So if you, whether you've been listening for five minutes or five years or the entire seven years that mommy income has been um, in the wild, um, 
You're not going to hear that kind of story here. Started with less than $100 for Amazon. I started with used books and did retail arbitrage and wholesale, finally wholesale bundles and even private label. So there's always a journey. And I know this is very, like, these are very common, trendy words that are thrown around so much, but they're real. Like, it really isn't some overnight, like, let me just press this button and follow step one step two, step three, and you're going to, you know, all of a sudden make a million dollars. Yes, there is processes and there are things that you can do and things you can strive for and um, best practices, no matter what career or business that you're building. But the first thing you have to realize is that it's not going to be black and white, cut and dry, follow this formula and you will get X result. It never turns out that way. There's always, and it depends. There's always, always, it depends on how much money and time and effort you're going to put in. It also determines, it also, it also depends on your own personal reasons, your passion, your purpose, and your definition of being successful. So, I'm going to dive in a little bit into these things, but I really, you know, I titled this podcast How to Build a Million Dollar Business Online, The Truth About Time and Money and Success. And the reason why is because a lot of people think how to, right? I bet you, you, you saw that title and you were like, oh my gosh, she's going to give us like step one, step two, step three, and she's going to outline this wonderful blueprint, and I'm going to follow that and get to the million dollars. Ah, You might as well click off now, because that's not exactly how this is going to go, but I can tell you this. By personal experience and by the plethora of other successful people that I have had the privilege of speaking to and meeting and interviewing, I can tell you that almost all of them share very specific qualities in how they operate. So it doesn't matter if you want to build an online business with cryptocurrency, or you want to do Amazon or eBay or some sort of other e-commerce or your Etsy Shopify store. It doesn't matter if you want to become a YouTube influencer, or you want to be a life coach or a fitness coach, any of these things. It does not matter the actual profession or career that you're going into. It's about the qualities that it takes to build said empire, if you will. I laugh when I say empire. I am literally celebrating something this week besides mommy income's birthday. It is reaching 10,000 YouTube subscribers. Woo-hoo. Now for some that might be just like a sneeze, like, okay, there's people with millions and millions of subscribers, but I am super proud of that because of what I've put in and the effort that I've put in to creating quality content for you to learn from and to consume and to uh, just let it inspire you and motivate you to take the next step. Because you all know I'm practical, right? We know that it's like, take some of these steps. You always need to take action steps. There's always something practical to do. There's always a solution. There's always something to move towards. And so it's not just about rah, rah, you know, motivation, inspiration kind of stuff. Although I love all that too. Um, It really is about the tactile hands-on things that you can do. So 10,000 and YouTube, YouTube subscribers. I looked at the first video that I, <laughs> I'm laughing, right? Don't look this up, please. I looked at like the very first video I ever put on YouTube and created. Number one, I'm not in it. I'm just a voiceover because it's like an over the shoulder thing, but it was April 15th, 2015. So um, that's what, six years and six months-ish um, or so, or five years and six months. I don't know. I'm terrible at math, but either way, it was that long ago, you know, was putting videos out there. And so just reflecting on how far mommy income has come and then thinking about uh, how do you build a million dollar business? How do you build a high six figure, almost a million dollar business in influencing or mentorship or teaching or training or courses? So if any of you guys have that desire in your heart to teach people, to mentor people, to coach people um, on any subject, including e-commerce and Amazon, 
um, there are just specific traits, specific characteristics, specific things that you should have well defined when you enter into this realm. So let's do just a little recap and a rewind of like mommy income. How did mommy income get started? Well, it got started because one day um, I was listening to, as I was preparing books to send to Amazon in my small little office that was in my bedroom at the time because I didn't have any other space for that, was listening to uh, FBA radio, which is, this was the way before live streams. This was before anything. They were just doing like a online, like radio show as Chris Green and Kat Simpson and listening as I'm processing books and putting stickers on them to send them to Amazon. And I specifically remember Chris Green saying something like that, saying, saying something that stopped me in my tracks. It was like, so you want to have a business or you want to teach people ever? There's always somebody that's, that's could learn from your experiences. So why not? And I thought to myself in that moment, 2008, well, I was, I think it may, may have been 2009. I'll have to look back at dates, but anyway, around that time. And I thought to myself, wow, I, I, maybe have some things I'd like to share. Like I've been a mom trying to make income from home uh, aside from any sort of MLM type things, which I'm not a hater of that. That was just never the avenue for me, which is why I got into reselling because that was way more of something that appealed to me as far as how I would like to spend my time and energy. Um, so he's like, well, why not? You know, if you've got something to share, there's always somebody that can learn from you. And so I let that sit in my brain for a while. And I decided, I kind of brainstormed a couple names of what I might want to do. And at that time, it had nothing to do with Amazon or anything like that. It was just more like, how have I made income as a stay at home mom? you know, and stay at home mom, something just didn't sound very attractive at the moment. So I'm like, mommy's income, mommy income. Awesome. So I bought the dot com and nothing else like 2009. Okay. And because it was like $5 a year to renew it, I bought like a five year package of this item. And so as I'm thinking about that, you know, fast forward many years, like I didn't do anything else with it. I just bought a dot com and thought, you know, maybe in my spare, spare time, I will do something with this dot com. And I kept, I think I bought a five year thing. It was like 25 or $30 or something at the time. Didn't think much of it, had the dot com, but didn't do anything because I was busy, you know, three kids and, you know, some other things that transpired in the meantime with all of that and realized that like later on. So let's go to 2013 and 14 when Facebook groups started becoming the thing, right? And everybody's in a Facebook group. And so there's many Facebook groups for FBA sellers. And so I started joining these groups and asking questions and answering questions just because it felt like a sense of community. I was uh, communicating with other people who were doing Amazon FBA from home and chatting with different people. And as I started to give some input in specific groups, um, somebody started to notice and said, hey, we do this show every week, uh, Scanner Society. Um, and they're like, we do this show every week. We'd love you to come do a segment. We have some questions about you know, things that you do and love to share your, your knowledge. That sounded like a blast and it was a live stream. Um, and it was just really interesting to me to be able to be a part of that. So I was very excited about that. And I, afterwards, there was several people that reached out and was just like, we want to hear more from you. Do you have so much to share and offer? So I um, decided that at that moment, I was going to start my own show. I had no audience. I had no one who really knew me except for some of these people from these Facebook groups and didn't really know a whole lot of people at the moment in time. I was just like kind of connected here and there, but not in a super big way. But I just decided that maybe it was time to take that advice and maybe maybe I could help a few people. And so on October 20th, 2014, I hosted my very first live stream show with 33 viewers. I was over the moon that 33 people would even give me an hour of their time to listen and ask questions about Amazon. And eventually, you know, just maybe a week or so later, started my own Facebook group um, that is still uh, the Amazon files, you know, buy mommy income. 
and started the website, Mommy Income, finally had something to say and something to do with that dot com. Um, so that was part of how the journey got started with Mommy Income. And of course, I could say the rest is history. There's a lot of different parts and pieces and um, people that have come and gone from Mommy Income. I had originally had a co-host. Um, Rob Watson, who kind of was my inspiration for getting started and getting off my feet and actually doing the show. I was not very tech savvy, still not, but he really helped me figure that stuff out. He was my co-host for a while. And of course, then I met Amy Fearman at a conference where we met on the show, but then we, we um, went to a conference together and we were best friends and we ended up, you know, partnering in mommy income for 2016 through 20. The, the first part of 2020. So I had a partner for a while. You guys may have seen her on the uh, wholesale bundle system. And she was a very big integral part of mommy income for a time. She has since retired from Amazon and moved on to something else that gives her passion. So as I look back at like seven years and, you know, there's been over, although you see on the podcast episode, maybe 200 and something, there's over 400 to almost 500 live, either live shows, videos, or podcasts since uh, 2014 when I first started. So um, it's been a really amazing journey to be able to share every little thing that I've been able to learn about Amazon and reselling and interview amazing people. So it's been a fun time to reflect. I mean, the first thing I want to really talk about when it comes to, okay, so, so you built mommy income in the past seven years and you know what that looks like, but also with the Amazon business, what are these character traits? What are these things or mindsets or whatever it is you want to call them? What is it that you need in order to build a long-term sustainable business, hit a million dollar mark, not once, but twice, um, and, and continue going that, in that direction? Um, there's several different qualities that kind of came to mind when I was thinking about this. The number one thing of how to really build any online business and kind of hit that million dollar mark is purpose. And yeah, this word is also very trendy and thrown around all over. It's on every Instagram meme and there's tons, hundreds of books written about it. Well, there's a reason for that because purpose or an anticipated outcome that is intended um, or that guides your plan, your actions, it guides your actions, your purpose. Why do you do what you do? That's purpose, right? And it reminds me, honestly, when I think about purpose, is in a very simplistic way. Have you guys ever seen the movie The Notebook? And it's like a Nicholas Sparks, you know, novel at one point. He turned it into a movie. And at one point, you know, she's, if you don't know it, go watch it because, you know, why not? But if I'll give you the Cliff's Notes version. So she meets this young man when she's younger and they date for a while. And then he has to go away. She writes to him for a year. Her mom does not want her to marry him. She wants her to be with somebody else, more high society. She's always been in love with him. She wrote him for a year. He never wrote back. So in her mind, so that, you know, they, they never really saw each other again. She gets engaged. She's getting ready to get married to someone else. And he, she has to unfinished business with him. So she seeks him out. She finds him to kind of clear the air. And um, the reality is she really does still love him. He did actually try to write her back that sort of thing. I'm probably screwing all this up, but all that to say that they finally end up together. But in the end, he's like, you can't, you know, you're engaged to him, but you say you love me. Like, what's it going to be? And he sits there and he says, what do you want? What do you want? What do you, he just keeps repeating that over and over again to her and forces her to make this decision. Like it's either going to be him or me, but I'm not going to hang out here forever. And try for you to make up your mind. <laughs> what do you want? And there's this scene. I wish I could kind of show it on here, but you know, copyright stuff. I'm not allowed. 
but it's like, what do you want? What is your purpose? Like, why do you want a million dollar business to begin with? Um, why do you, why do you think that would benefit you? What is, what do you want? Is it freedom from a nine to five, a six figure salary, something that's completely your own that you're like, yes, I built this business. This is my thing. Why do you want that? This is a very simple thing, because if you ask a lot of people, a lot of successful sellers, successful people, I don't know, probably Oprah at this point, you could ask anybody, what, what is it that you want? What is your purpose? Why do you do the things you do? Because you absolutely must know why and be passionate about the why in order to start or grow something that big. You know why? Because it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of money. It takes a ton of mental resources. And there will be days that are really hard. There are, will be days where you're going to want to quit. You're going to want to get give up. You're going to want to crawl into a hole. And your passion and your purpose of why you're doing this to begin with, that's what's going to keep you moving on the really hard days. That's what's going to keep you moving. So just ask yourself, what do you want? <laughs> I, you know, that's the notebook, right? What do you want? What is it that you want? Because you have to define that before you can start figuring out the steps to get there. If you don't have a target, you don't know where you're aiming at. And you're just like shooting arrows into the dark and hoping they hit something. And then when you go investigate, you realize, oh, that did hit something. It was just not the something I wanted to hit because I'm shooting in the dark. <laughs> so when there's days you want to quit and give up, your passion and your purpose is going to keep you going. What is the reason that you do what you do? Because do you even like it? Honestly, do you even like what you're doing? Do you even like the sort of business? So maybe you hear or you see something on YouTube that's like, oh, make a million dollars with cryptocurrency. But like, do you even like that and or enjoy that? Or is it just another quick way or some crazy way from home to make money? Because if it's only about the money, you will eventually quit. You will eventually get burned out. You will quit. You will not keep going because when it gets hard, you're going to lose interest. You're going to quit. You're going to procrastinate. You're not going to get to your goals or what that thing that you want when something gets hard because they will get hard. Here's the question you've got to ask yourself. If you're, are you in the right business? Are you in the right, going in the right direction? Here's the question on your absolute worst day. Is it still worth doing? what you're doing right now, the business that you're building or the business that you intend to build or want to build or are considering building on your worst day, will you still get up the next day and come back for more? Do you love it that much that you want to come back? Or maybe it's not the exact steps you love. Cause don't get me wrong. Like there are things that I absolutely despise about my, both my businesses in certain ways. Which, by the way, those are things that you should probably outsource the sooner the better, <laughs> the things that you don't like doing. Um, but there's always going to be things you don't like doing. You know, we have to, I don't like emptying the trash, but like we got to get it done. But on your worst day, on the worst day where you feel the most discouraged, the most everything, will you still come back and do it again? Is your passion or your purpose strong enough to get up and do it again, even on your worst day? Because if you've said yes, then you've nailed the passion and purpose. And that could be just the fact that you are determined to not go back to a nine to five. And like, this is the easiest or the fastest or the something out of that situation. And that could be enough of a driving purpose for you to be like, all I want is to, I don't mind working. I don't mind working 60 hours a week if I have to, but on something that's my own not working for the man where they tell you you have to be there at a certain time and you can't take days off for dance recitals or vacations or anything like that but like something that's all your own if on your worst day you will still get up and come back for more and money is not the only motivating factor you've got passion and purpose nailed I'll tell you a story on one of my worst days on Amazon. Well, just, you know, we all know if you've been on Amazon, even for 10 minutes, you know that you want to hit your head against the wall half the time for customer service and just 
uh, some of the policies that like contradict each other and things like that. I, I'm on my worst days. I literally looked at all the options. I was like, what can I do instead of Amazon that can replace this income? How can I make money doing something else? Because I have just had it with this. And I was just like going on Indeed and like looking at sal- like jobs that like were in my salary, you know, desired salary or whatever it is. And as I'm scrolling through some of this stuff, I became painfully aware of how amazing my business is. As I'm scrolling through the jobs with the similar salary and the requirements that it took to do these jobs, it must have 50 to 60 hours a week to dedicate this, must be willing to travel, must be willing to basically sell your soul to the devil to, you know, manage these teams and do all these things and all this stuff. And I was like, wow. Yeah, I think no. Sometimes it gives you a big dose of reality to be like, yeah, I deal with some headaches at Amazon, but I have flexible hours and control over the different tasks that I do and don't do and excellent pay and but still unlimited potential for growth. There was just no comparison. So even on the worst day when I thought I'm going to abandon ship, I was going to move on. But the other thing that kept staring me in the face was my purpose is to help others. I believe that I was put here on this earth to help and coach and mentor and inspire and support other people. And if I took away the Amazon aspect of that, I could still have a purpose and a plan to teach other people, but I really just felt that, that I feel that hurt. I, I enjoy teaching and mentorship. Even on my worst day of haters, and y'all don't know, the emails and the comments and the things that come through my inbox and my DMs, and there's a lot of people that have a lot to say about everything I say. <laughs> You'd be surprised at, at how many people d- just just needed to voice their opinion because I said this one thing that maybe they didn't agree with or like or whatever. You'd be so surprised at at how people want to reach out and say terrible things. But I enjoy teaching and mentoring. I love being a part of a community and seeing people reach their highest potential. That I, I enjoy that so much. I like cheer for all of you when I hear even, hey, I listed my first bundle or I opened my Amazon account or I got my first supplier or whatever it is. I enjoy this unlimited potential that all of you have. And want to, I want to nurture that and and pull it out of you because we all get all in our own way. I will tell you, I get in my own way. um, Still, I got in my own way doing this episode because this is not my typical, let me show you how to solve problems on Amazon episode. This is very open and vulnerable and uh, things like that. So, you know, I got in my own way and procrastinated this for quite a while because, you know, though I'm human and I have concerns about these different things, but I also feel like it's a huge disservice when you have the keys to unlock someone else's prison and then you just stand there and hold the keys, but you don't unlock that door for someone. Now you can't force them to walk out. You can't force them to take any action, but you have the keys to unlock their door. Then the rest is on them. And I feel like I've been given the keys to help not every single person in the world, but the the people that God brings to me to help and serve, I have keys to unlock the door for them. If they want to have a successful business, if they want to hit a million dollars, if they want to get out of their nine to five, whatever that is. And so I feel like it's, it, it's wrong for me even to not share those things. So here I am and here I'm sharing. So another, that's one of the the key factors, I think, in in success and reaching that success is what do you want? What is your purpose? Why do you do what you do? Do you like it? And on your worst day, would you come back for more? If someone knocked you down, knocked you off your horse, and you were like two seconds from losing everything, would you get up and do it again tomorrow? That's the question 
that will help you determine your passion, your purpose. Why do you do this? Because that is in the vein of every person I've seen be extremely successful at something. They just love it. And they love it because it maybe gives them a sense of fulfillment or gives other people fulfillment or they help other people, whatever that purpose is, they have one and they know what it is. And they're able to even articulate what that is for them. And I think that's one of the things of how you build a business is that you have to first and foremost have that. Some people call it a mission statement. Some people call it, um, you know, just their passion, their purpose. What's your why? You know, there's so many books written about it again, but honestly, that's, that's one of the things at the core is determining what that is for you. It might just be that you want to set a really good example for your children that anything's possible and that you had this nine to five, but that was not serving you and it was sucking the life out of you. And what is it, that, what is your passion and purpose? Because I don't care what age, what demographic, what financial, what finances you have or don't have. It doesn't matter. All you need is a reason, your purpose, and then some of these other things. So the next one is, I don't know how to pick these words, right? Like persistence and consistency are another, a few of these traits. Number one is the persistence. Persistence is like, how much time is this going to take? Like a lot of people just want this formula again of like, well, how long does it take to get there? Well, it depends on a lot of things, but at the same time, it's really more about the character trait, your belief system, your mindsets shift. Is it persistence is continuing towards a goal, especially in spite of like op opposition, obstacles, discouragement. It's lasting and enduring perseverance. It's constantly repeated and continued. That is the persistence because nobody is going to chase after your dreams, but you, no one's going to achieve that purpose, that passion, that goal that you have, except you. So you've got to be persistent because setbacks and obstacles and frustrations and bad days and worst day evers are going to happen. So the question is, how do you be persistent through that? How do you look at that as just something in your way rather than a brick wall that you can't get around over or through? Persistence, constantly repeating the efforts. No matter what, you have this goal and no matter what's in it, around it, in your way, this way, whatever, it's either I'm going to find a way or I'm going to make a way. That is persistence, and that is consistent with many, many of your elite that you would see. I mean, I, I'm talking about things like Michael Jordan and Oprah and presidents and billionaires. They're all persistent. They don't take no for an answer when their goals are on the line. And it's not just like, I hate the word goal, to be honest. I really do but it's like a necessary thing in our lives, right? We have to have some sort of goal. And I think it's because I think goal is like some, this big, huge end finish line. And honestly, I struggle with finish lines because I'm always like, what's next? Like that can't be the end, right? That can't be the entire reason we did all these things, right? So I struggle with, with this big goal because I think now what? Like I'm always thinking about now what? Um, so I tend to like the smaller steps, hence the book, right? Dream big, step small. Like a lot of these concepts I'm talking about today are in the book as well. So stay tuned because I do have a very special offer for you. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to tell you that right now. Because it's Mommy Income's birthday, um, I'm offering a very rare and special gift for all of you listening. Any course or any product that I have for sale between now and the end of 10, 20, 2021 is 50% off with the coupon code birthday. 
you're welcome. Happy birthday to mommy income and the gifts are all for you. Yay. Um, this does not count workshops just so you know, um, workshops are in live in-person events and they have a whole different protocol and that cannot be 50% off because of all the different things that go involved with that. But any course, any product, even coaching, 50% off, use the coupon code birthday, go to mommyincome.com slash courses to see all of the offerings and use the coupon code birthday at checkout, 50% off only until the end of 2010, 2021. So you're welcome. Happy birthday to me and to all of you. Oh, uh, you get this, this special thing, but talking, going back to persistence and talking about oh, how much time does it take to build a business and these types of things. See, the number one thing that gets in our way with persistence and continually deciding that you will not give up regardless of what goes in your way, it's just like this determination. Um, I've been called stubborn a lot. I like the word determined instead because Stubborn seems so negative and mean and like you see like a mule that like just will not move. Um, oh, I'm moving. I'm just moving in this direction. And if you get in my way, I'm going around and over or under or you're coming with me because we're still going in that direction. I like determined instead of stubborn, but yeah, I'll own both if I need to. But the number one thing that can get in our way of our goals and our dreams and what we want to accomplish, including that elusive million dollar mark. By the way, I use that number because everyone else likes to love that number when really it, it can be to any goal. It can be your first thousand dollars that you want to make on your own. But that somehow seems to be sexier to call it a million dollars. Who cares what that number is? It's a, more about your purpose and your persistence. And the number one killer for that is comparison. We are all guilty of this. So you can just raise your hand and admit it right now that you're guilty. Comparison will kill you every time. We have all seen these videos, right? These videos of gurus or influencers who've made millions in six months or whatever it is. And they're like, ah, people post on Facebook groups. Like I made a hundred thousand dollars this week or something. You can see all that and that's all great. And I'm not hating on it. And everybody has the right to be able to celebrate their successes in whatever way they see fit. But when you see that, what, how do you feel about it? Because most of the time it doesn't really induce motivation in us. It really kind of makes us feel less than, especially if you're not there yet, especially if that's something you want and don't have, that's envy and, or, and, or jealousy, or, you know, something like that, that those are ugly words, right? We don't want to feel any of that because it doesn't really produce motivation it doesn't produce inspiration and action. It really just produces depression and it steals our joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. I think I, I want to say uh, Eleanor Roosevelt or somebody was known for, for quoting that. I'm probably wrong at this point. So please fact check me and let me know. <laughs> but, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. It really is. Because when you start looking at where you are, and where other people are and what they're, where they're bragging about being, um, there's way more information that you don't have to be able to compare any or all of that in general. So that's something I really want you to consider and think. So you might see somebody, and I think this is great advice, right? You see somebody that is where you want to be. And so you want to connect with them or emulate them, um, not copycat or anything like that, but just like emulate the qualities in the things that you see other people doing that are successful. And that's great advice. As long as you understand the backstory, as long as you understand how they got there, which is why I'm telling you all of this right now. Because for me, you're never going to, you, you can might see one video that's like, oh my gosh, this million dollars and this, that, whatever. But look at the journey because that's what you're going to have to emulate. It's not going to be the, I can't wait until I can post my numbers on Facebook and be proud of them. That is not the goal. What you're going to have to emulate is the journey. What kind of time and money did these people put in? What did they have to invest? Did they start with $10 or 10 million? Where were they 10 years ago? 
where will they be in six months? Are they still even going to be around? Are they still going to be doing these things? What is their passion and purpose? How much time did they put in and for how long to get that result? These are not terrible questions. These are great questions because it gives us something that we all need, which is realistic expectations for our own circumstances. We've got to have our expectations in alignment with our purposes, our time, our money, our energy, and our circumstances. So I can't sit here and give you a blueprint of you're going to need X amount of dollars and X amount of time and X amount of everything in order to equal, you know, this is not a math problem like that. This is way more uh, if this, then this, if this, then this, if this, then probably this, but not so sure this. And then maybe around here, I might have to go back to start and then here. It looks way more like that than a lot of people think. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of time and money do you have to put in? How will you spend that time? Because you can have 80 hours a week to spend on your business or eight. But I can tell you people I've met that only have eight hours a week to spend on their business are far more successful and faster because they're more deliberate about their time. They're more consistent with their time. And that's another major quality that you see in million dollar successful business owners in any genre, in any niche, in any career, in any profession is they have their passion and their purpose They're very persistent, regardless of the obstacles that stand in their way, and they're consistent. And that doesn't mean every waking hour of every single day. It means they're consistent with their time and effort, putting it in towards the goal that they have. So if your goal this month or this year or in 10 years is to generate a million dollars in revenue, then you need to be consistently taking steps that lead you in that direction. That also means you're going to have to consistently sacrifice other things that don't align with that or adjust your timeline because you're not going to sit around for an hour a day, seven days a week, and just work on your business for an hour and then do all things there and expect to get to that timeline. That's not a realistic expectation. And if anybody's telling you it is, they're not giving you the whole picture. It's about that persistence and consistency because you've got to be able to have your passion on those worst day ever's to be able to continue moving forward. You've got to be persistent when things stand in your way because they will every time. There's always going to be an obstacle. There's always going to be a setback. That's true for anything you're going to do. So if you're thinking even about quitting now, if you've been having some hardships and some setbacks, you're going to face that no matter where you go. So you have to decide if this is worth it or it's not on your like worst day ever. So the consistency is 100% the number one key to getting where you want to go and understanding that change is the rule, not the exception. So change is constant, especially in our technological age where things are constantly changing. As soon as you figure this out, they're going to create a new way to do it. It's going to be faster, easier, and hopefully faster and easier. But you're going to have to continually adapt. And honestly, that's not for everyone. Entrepreneurship and business ownership is not for everyone. If you cannot handle constant change, if you can't define the purpose and the passion that you have to to achieve that purpose, and you are really good at giving up when things get hard, entrepreneurship is not for you. Just going to put that out there to just be like, that's like fact. If those are things that you really, really struggle with, maybe entrepreneurship isn't right for you. Because those are the things that you're going to have to work with and endure no matter what happens. So just chew on that for a bit. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just those are kind of the facts that you need. And with the persistence comes perseverance, right? And I don't know if anybody likes this word. It sounds like a fancy, sexy, fun word to use, but it's not. 
it's hard. Perseverance. Patience is a little bit different, and we'll talk about that in a second, but perseverance is a determination. It's where you strive to hit a goal, achieve your target, no matter what. Like you will persevere through the hard things, which also presupposes that you expect things to be rocky and rough. If you expect sunshines and rainbows, just just take a, we're going to have a come to Jesus talk here. And you're just going to have to take that under your belt. You have to say, this is going to be hard, but you can do hard things. You've done tons of hard things in your life. Tons of them. I don't care if you're 20 or you're 70. We've all done hard things and reached goals and pushed through and persevered something. We've all learned to walk, right? Most of us have learned to walk. So you've persevered through something, falling down and getting back up and falling down and getting back up. If you have ever had a baby, you know what perseverance is because being pregnant for nine months and then going into labor for who knows how, I don't care if it's one hour or 20 hours, perseverance through the hard things. You can do hard things, but it's an anticipation of, I know hard times will come but I'm going to push through them because I am determined to reach my target, which presupposes that you have a target, AKA purpose, passion that we already talked about. So having that purpose and passion and having that persistence in pursuing that, and then the perseverance to push through, because that also suggests that there's a delayed success that's involved. Persistence is doing something despite the difficulty or the delay in achieving success. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't even happen over a year, maybe. But it's knowing and determining that it will happen and I'm going to make it happen no matter what. No matter how long it takes. Because that's another reality that we all need to face And just be reminded, you all have heard me say this a million times, and I'm going to say it again because I need to hear it, and so do you. 168 hours. No human being gets any more time in their week than that. It doesn't matter about your socioeconomical status. It doesn't matter your race, your gender, your beliefs, your geographic location. None of that matters. We all only get 168 hours a week to spend. And you get to decide how to spend that time for the most part. I know we have other responsibilities and other things, but you get to decide what you're going to do with that or what you're going to do with your leisure time. We all need to sleep at some point. We all need to eat. We all have basic life necessities we need to take care of, which takes away a good third or more, I would say more, uh, of our daily time. So what are you going to do with the rest? And if you have a nine to five, then now you've got another third of that taken away. So then you have even more limited time. But that doesn't matter. It's how you spend that time and how you feel about spending that time and what you believe you're going to achieve by spending that time in that way. It's the perseverance is the hanging in there, knowing that you will get what you want, no matter how long it takes. Just say that with me, friends, just right now, like wherever you are. Okay. You're going to be weird. You're, you're grocery shopping with your AirPods in and you're pushing your cart and you're about to say something out loud and people are going to look at you. Okay, fine. If that's you, you can whisper it, but like say it with me. No matter how long it takes, I am going to reach my goal. There, you said it, you did it. And now you can just let that sink in and believe that because who cares how long it takes? Who's counting? Who's looking? Are you going to compare yourself to someone else when you don't even know their circumstances? No, you just say, yeah, it took 10 years, but 10 years is going to go by anyways. Five years, five minutes doesn't matter. If you have a goal that you want to reach and you are consistent and you're persevering through the hard things because you're expecting the hard things and determining that you can get through them, 
then it doesn't matter how long it takes. Be consistent, be persistent, persevere through the hard things. And your passion, that thing, the, the reason why you do that, it's going to come to pass. You will see results. It seems a little discouraging if someone comes to you and says, hey, in 10 years, you can be a millionaire. Would you say, okay, I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 65. If you haven't experienced the benefits of making a million dollars and someone comes to you and say, in 10 years, you can be a millionaire and I can help you. Would you say no? Well, maybe if you're already a millionaire. <laughs> but seriously, like someone could say, or could say, someone could say, you could be a world champion of, I don't know, whatever you're passionate about <laughs> in 10 years. Would you be like, if someone could guarantee you that, now let's be real, we cannot really guarantee anybody that because it's all about time and effort and energy. However, if someone could really come to you and say, yeah, in 10 years, this is completely possible and completely possible for you. And I don't care where you're starting from. And you, it was almost like this guarantee. Like, wouldn't you want to do that to be like, hey, yeah. Or you could maybe like, maybe if I'm good enough, I can do it in five years. Determination, perseverance, having that goal, that passion, that purpose. It's possible. You have to have realistic expectations. And that's part of it. You're going to have challenges and setbacks. Now, my one of my favorite, my mentor, a mentor of mine, Roger Crawford, who is a international tennis hall of famer, who also has a very poignant disability that you would think would hinder you from playing tennis. Um, it actually does not. You guys are just going to have to look up Roger Crawford. He is a fantastic mentor of mine and he's the most kindest human being. And he is the most determined that I think I've ever seen, except for maybe coach Rob Mendez, but you know, that's very similar, it's similar stories, different, but similar, um, which is why these two gentlemen really inspire me is because Roger Crawford said challenges, setbacks, obstacles, they're inevitable. They're going to happen. Nothing is just a smooth ride every single time, but defeat totally optional, totally optional. You do not have to be defeated. You will have setbacks. You will have challenges. You'll have obstacles. You might lose a time or two, whether that's a sports game or money or whatever it is, you might actually lose. But defeat is optional because defeat really only happens when you give up, when you stop trying, when you quit. It's completely up to you. Every story that I've ever heard from somebody successful, somebody who is inspiring, somebody, so, so many people have amazing stories, books, all kinds of, I mean, you can be inspired constantly if you're listening to podcasts, reading books, all these different things. But every story has a pivotal moment where quitting seemed like the very best option. Less pain, less frustration, less responsibility, that quitting really just seemed like the best option right now is to just throw in the towel, quit while I'm ahead. Have you ever heard that? Honestly, quit while you're ahead. What does that even mean? It depends because some people give, don't give up or quit. They pivot. They move on or they move in a different direction, but they're still moving and their purpose and passion has not changed. It just maybe has changed direction. The passion and the purpose may not change. The execution of that or the avenue by which you reach that goal can change. And that's not quitting, that's pivoting. But there has always been a pivotal moment for people where, they, where quitting seemed like the best option. I'll tell you for me, it was really not that long ago when I was telling you about searching for other jobs that would be maybe the same equivalent pay and the same whatever, because I've just had enough with Amazon and their craziness. And I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. And how am I going to hang in there? And quitting might have seemed like the best option. But then I thought of all of you. And I thought, there's no way that I'm going to quit. Amazon, because there's always a solution. Yes, there's going to be setbacks, but the defeat's optional. If I give up now, I lose all my credibility because I've just showed you how to quit. 
I didn't show you how to push through when things got hard. You see, I'm not that passionate about Amazon and selling online as much as I am passionate about you and passionate about what my ultimate goals are, which is to lead by example and, and, and help people to reach their own highest potential, to believe in themselves and to develop these characteristics that sometimes like to hide in the recesses of our mind because they somehow feel safe there. You've got to believe that you will eventually achieve your goals if you keep putting the work in. Now, we don't sit around and believe that we're going to get stuff that we don't work for. I mean, that's crazy. That's craziness. So don't go there. But if you are constantly putting in the work in and you don't see the results that you want and you just feel like all I'm doing is chasing my tail or on the spinning wheel or, you know, on the hamster wheel, whatever it is. You have to believe that eventually you will get there if you keep working. Now, you you might need some help, you know, because that's part of every that's another part of the traits of every single thing I've seen when I've interviewed successful people and read things and all that stuff is asking for help, getting help when you need it, humbling yourself enough to say, I can't do it on my own. Or a better way to say that, because I hate the word can't, just so you know, um, that's like a bad word in my house. We don't say can't here. Well, I can't tell the grown people what to do, but um, at the same time, I'm just like, can't is a bad word. You're either you won't, or you're afraid, or you don't know how, but you can't say you can't. So you're allowed to say, I don't know how. I'm afraid, I'm scared, or I won't do it. But can't is not an option because you can. You just might not want to because it's hard. You might not want to because you're scared. You might not try because you don't know how. But can't is not an option. You can. You just won't for whatever reason. So if you actually believe that you can, you can ask for help. Get help. Get a mentor. Read a book watch a YouTube video, listen to a podcast, hire a coach, hire a therapist, um, hire a housekeeper so that you have more time to work on your business. You need help. You cannot do this on your own. You should not do this on your own Uh, because there's strength in numbers and we can always have something to learn from someone else. Like someone made a mistake and say, hey, I can save you thousands of dollars by learning from my mistake. Uh, Sign me up, show me where. So thinking about those things, that this has a, all of your efforts have an exponential effect. You just don't always get to see the result right this second. You don't get to see the actual end game, even if you're building something. I often use this analogy as, as part of like effort and consistency, right? With um, like building a path, for example. So say you have a big, huge pile of bricks. And you want to build a path from maybe your front door to your mailbox or maybe from your back door to your she shed. I don't know. But you're going to build a nice, beautiful brick paver path. Don't have a lot of money. You don't have a lot of time to really construct this path. So every day you decide you're going to put in to to lay one brick in place. So in 90 days, you can lay one brick every single day for 90 days in its proper position. So you're talking about very calculated, very consistent action. You want to build a path, that's your goal. And you're going to be consistent in putting one brick out there every single day until it's done. Say there's a hundred bricks. And every day for a hundred days, you go out there, despite the rain, despite how tired you are, despite how busy you are, you've said, I want to reach this goal in a hundred days. I'm going to build this path. And I only have the time, effort, and energy to lay one brick a day. So you've got your idea, you got your plan, you've got your goal. And every day you lay one brick. And some of you will be like, oh my gosh, you know, you could just spend a whole afternoon or a whole day or a couple of weeks to just get it done. Right. And just have this build this path. But if you don't have a couple of weeks or that much money or whatever, maybe you can only afford to buy a brick a day and lay it down. 
But if you do that in a hundred days, you will have a path. But if you just haphazardly grab a brick and be like, oh, I'm supposed to lay this brick today. I'm just going to toss it out the front door and hope it lands in the right place because I just don't have the energy or effort. I don't really care about this path or whatever it is. That's exactly the result you're going to get. But every day, if you just go out there and one day you lay this brick, I'm going to put one brick in the right place, the right time, just lay that one brick down, put that effort in and come back in. In 100 days, you're going to have a very beautiful, wonderfully crafted path. So it's about, it's not how small the step is. It's just taking that step, making it intentional and, and, and consistent with the step. I know that we all have things that stop us, things that hinder us. Building our business and the real truth about the time and money and energy and the success really is determined by what you really want and what you're willing to do within your own circumstances, your own finances, your own time and effort into putting, putting that into what you're doing. Because you have to first believe that your goal is possible. You can follow steps. You can follow a plan. You can take action. All of us can. We've all proved that because we got up this morning. We brushed our teeth. We had a cup of coffee. We went to work. We even worked on our own business. We maybe changed a diaper or made sure kids had shoes or lunch boxes. Or maybe we ushered a spouse out the door for their retirement activity so we could have alone time. Wherever you are in life right this minute, your goals are possible. Your million dollar business, your how you get there is all up to you. And how you do that, how do you build a million dollar online business with purpose, with persistence, with consistency, perseverance? These are the main qualities you're going to see in people who have achieved something that most of us would think is huge or big or inspiring. They all have those things in common. And so I challenge you on this wonderful mommy income birthday, which by the way, would never have happened without all of those things. There was lots of hard times, times that were confusing and times that were like, am I even doing the right things, right? Am I doing that? And that's where the help comes in, right? Because if you feel like I have been putting consistent effort and energy and time into it, and I'm still not seeing the results I want, then maybe the problem is that you're putting the efforts and energies in the wrong place. And maybe that's not why it's not reflecting in the goals you have. So if that's the case and you feel like I have been trying and I have been putting in this consistent effort and I have been doing all the right things and I'm still not seeing the result, that's when you need another set of eyeballs to help you, to, to kind of peek into what you're doing to help you tweak it just a little bit. Because if you are doing all those things and still not seeing results, there's something amiss. So let's chat about that. And because of this wonderful birthday sale that we're having, we can chat. We have a coaching packages that um, are currently 50% off. This has never been offered before. Um, so I'm just excited to talk to any one of you or all of you about your business goals and figure out what that is for you. Uh, so mommyincome.com slash courses, the code word, the coupon code is birthday. So I would love to hear from some of you. But as I close, I wanted to just say thank you to all of you. Thank you for supporting me and my dream. Thank you for listening and interacting with the videos and leaving podcast reviews. Thank you for interacting on social media, following and get, sending your hearts and your likes and your um, shares. I mean, that's not my, what makes us who we are, but I see you. I see you participating. I see you there. And I want you to know that you are seen and heard and loved. And you are the reason that I do what I do every single day. 
I know you could be anywhere else listening to any other thing, doing any other uh, thing with your time and your energy. And I don't take that for granted. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for this business and cheers to another seven years of mommy income or maybe more. I will. I'm just, I'm grateful for you. I'm thankful that you're here to listen. And I am looking forward to even the next decade of what's going to be uh, mommy income is going to be. So stay tuned and uh, thank you for listening. And I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon files.